friends, and welcome to our Sunday streaming services coming at you on Facebook, YouTube, and of course here on Zoom. If you're with us on Zoom, welcome. Say hello in the chat. Uh, feel free to join in some conversation there, and please consider staying afterwards for Talk Back. It's where we have a community time and can talk about the service or what else, whatever else is going on. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, please subscribe so that you can get notifications when we go live. Today's service is Zen and the Art of Transcendence with UUCOC Prez, Beth Furry. Pastoral care, these are crazy times and I'm so happy to see how many people are taking advantage of the pastoral care that we are offering with Deneen Robinson. If you are one of the people who could benefit from some pastoral care, email her at pastoralcare at oakcliffuju.org. She's also doing two weekly Zoom check-ins and chats, Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. So check that out. This is fun. Have you heard? UUCOC has been named 2020 Peacemaker Organization of the Year by the Dallas Peace and Justice Center. Thank you to all the social justice people in the church who helped make that possible. Um, there will be an online event to celebrate December 9th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Every year we have people attend, um, and this year we will too. If you'd like to be one of the people who attends, visit www.dpjc.org. Very exciting. Online auction fundraiser. Um, that is coming quicker and quicker. We will be doing that very soon, all online. Lots and lots of fun. Lots of people have donated some really great stuff. If you have some really great stuff or some really kooky, interesting stuff um, that you would like to donate uh, to the church, then, or if you would like to help out with the actual auction, email Donna Leach at auctions at oakcliffuu.org. If you are a crafts person um, or an artist who would like to donate their craft or art, and perhaps receive a portion of the purchase price, then uh, email the same address book to Nancy Harms. If you volunteer in any capacity, um, please be sure to report your time so that we can turn those hours into grant money. Very, very fun. You can do that in Breeze. So financial stuff here. Um, Giving Tuesday is December 1st. The money always goes very quickly. So consider donating to UUCOC so that we can get matched. Um, and it's that time of year. I rely on Amazon every Christmas. Um, and this year, extra so, right? And that money can add up very quickly. If you are using Amazon, please name UUCOC as a beneficiary um, for Amazon Smile, and we will get a portion of everything that you buy. Very fun, very easy. You just set it up once, and then it just automatically happens. Um, there's another way. So you're not doing Amazon. Don't like Bezos. That's fine. If you are doing any kind of online shopping, there's also something called iGive. And iGive will um, just go up there, go to iGive.com, set it up. And then whenever you buy something online, it will do the same thing that Amazon Smile does. It just works across all the different websites instead of just Amazon. So sign up for those two things. And that's a big way to help your church without even thinking about it. You're going to do your Christmas shopping anyway or your holiday shopping. Just sign up for those and we will automatically benefit from it. Very, very fun. Very, very cool. Other ways to help out, oakcliffuu.org slash donate and our text to give option. There's also a donate button on Facebook. If you are new here today, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we are so happy to have you. Please go and sign our guest book at oakcliffuu.org slash guest. Here we are. It's that time again. Everybody's favorite time of the week, the time that we sit and Think about how much we love each other and we celebrate how long we've loved each other. Member anniversaries. I like this one. This one's fun. I know I say it every week, but look, I genuinely mean it. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with this. This week, 
Clint Chamberlain and James Fairchild. Oh my gosh, love them so, so much. And can't wait till we can all get together again and celebrate all of our anniversaries together. In the meantime, happy UUCOC member anniversary to you too. And to everybody else, happy Sunday. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Oak Cliff. Thank you for having the curiosity and the courage to join us. We welcome you, whoever you are, whatever spiritual tradition, gender, age, race, sexual orientation, or background you may bring to our community. We hope you will find here comfort, connection, challenge, respect, and above all, love. May the light we now kindle inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to bless and not to curse, to serve you, spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. And now in Spanish. Que esta luz que ahora encendemos nos inspire a usar nuestros dones y poderes para sanar y no para herir, para ayudar y no para impedir, para bendecir y no para maldecir, para servirte a ti, espíritu de amor, compasión y perdón. What we call a beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of our exploring will be to arrive where we first started and to know the place for the first time. Because we love one another, we honor each other's individual spiritual journey, we celebrate life's abundance and service to each other, our community, and the world. We connect with each other in love, respect, and acceptance. Thus do we covenant together. And now in Spanish. Porque nos amamos unos al otro, oramos el viaje espiritual de cada individuo. Celebramos 
la abundancia de la vida en el servicio a entre sí, nuestra comunidad y el mundo. Ponemos en contacto a unos con otros en el amor, respeto y acepciencia. Así que hacemos parte. In our community, we make time each week to share pieces of our lives with one another, our joys and sorrows. We do this because each person in this community has value. Each person's experience matters. We share our sorrow with one another today, knowing that sorrow comes into each person's life. Knowing that together, we offer comfort. At this time, we invite you to publicly post your sorrows and prayer requests to the Zoom chat or send them to our Facebook Messenger. Also, share our joys with one another, knowing that joy comes into all our lives, knowing that joy calls unto joy, knowing that together our voices can rise in a chorus of celebration. At this time, we invite you to publicly post your joys and prayer requests to the Zoom chat or send them to our Facebook Messenger. Over the past few months, we have been delving into spiritual practice. Over the course of time, we've learned about personal, communal, spiritual, mind, body, soul, life, and justice. We have talked about meditation, creativity, and finding joy in the everyday. Each provided us with examples we could use in our daily existence toward finding peace within ourselves. So. Where does this leave us? For many, it is simply enough to find a practice that fits into our daily life and gives us a break from the mundane. There's nothing wrong with that, and I honor those who find a way to do it. But what if those for us for whom a spiritual practice becomes so ingrained in our souls that we want to move forward and we start searching for more? 
Obviously, few of us are seeking to become monks who spend each waking moment searching for the full connection they feel when they reach Zen. Yet, it is possible to find that same connection through the determination and decision to leave behind those things that do not serve us and keep us from growing fully human. For life is a series of lessons if we choose to learn them. And we do attract what we put effort into. Those things are indisputable in both spirituality and psychology. But it is an integration of those things that are with negative with the integration of those things that are positive that creates a fully functioning, aware human being. It is not toxic positivity that always tells you to get rid of negative thoughts any more than it is the focus on fear and the negative. Life is about balance and finding a way to deal with your reality without sinking into the type of insanity which seems so prevalent in today's current and social political climate. Transcendence means to go beyond your limitations or to exceed the limitations of thought. For many religions, that is represented by a personal relationship with God. For others, it is represented by Zen and the ability to rise above what is in this world so it can be observed without judgment. For psychologists, it represents the ability to overcome trauma and deep soul damage to become the person you were intended to be. I've been thinking about this a great deal lately as a person who experienced trauma, as a life coach, and as president of this congregation. As such, I will be looking at transcendence and transcendence at a personal and communal level. When you've experienced a trauma that is so deep, it shakes your very existence. There are generally a few stages that you need to go through. First, we tend to wrap ourselves up in it, burrito stage, as I call it, and wear it as a blanket. This is okay. It's normal and it's part of the grieving process. However, as you get further away from the traumatic experience, you begin to have choices. Are you going to grow through the experience or are you going to allow it to become a defining factor in how you live your life? If you decide you don't want to stay in that dark place of fear and anger, you usually go through what I call the dark night of the soul. This part is excruciating and it has its own pitfalls. Many trauma victims end up stuck here until they conclude that the pain of staying put is more unbearable than the pain of moving forward. It is at this stage that a lot of people come to looking for a UU church, trying to find a way forward from the pain. It is one of the best parts of the UU tradition, in my opinion, because they are looking for a way to move forward from past experience and we can provide something unique that gives them the support as they grow. I've been thinking a lot this week about how the Wizard of Oz is an analogy for the political climate at the time Baum wrote it, but it is also an analogy for personal transcendence. Each character in there starts out with a personal problem or as they see it as defect they wish to change. Like life, once they have decided to seek a way to change that issue, they are thrown into every possible situation that will challenge them to find a way to overcome it. It isn't until they uncover the secrets that hold them that they discover they always have the ability. They were just not seeing the answers because they were wrapped up in the pain. Like it or not, life is a series of lessons thrown at us, and we will always attract those opportunities needed for healing. It is a personal choice as to whether we recognize them and find a way past what is holding us back. One of the most interesting conundrums of the UU tradition is that we fight injustice in the world while often failing to recognize it on a personal level. This results in a victim mindset for someone who isn't ready to move forward and the tendency for others to practice codependency. Their intentions are good. 
many want it both ways, and it's a problem. We are perfectly willing to hold corporations and government accountable for transcending beyond a limited worldview, yet we don't do so on a personal level. The reality is that what happens on a personal level is what is out there globally. Unless we help others to transcend their personal trauma and take responsibility for their actions, we cannot expect the same of the rest of the world, such as my need to rewrite the sermon once I recognized I had to take personal responsibility for some of the wording in the last one. We seek to become more diverse and bring in others to the fold. These others also come with trauma and are at various stages in their growth path. How can we help them if we ourselves are still wrapped up in our own division and are willing, unwilling to work toward a way past seeing the world as them versus us? It's akin to putting a 10-year-old in charge of a playground full of four-year-olds who all want the same toy. Utter chaos ensues, and somebody's got to be the adult eventually. This doesn't mean we don't listen. And it doesn't mean we don't honor that each of us is on a personal journey. It does mean that we take personal responsibility for our growth and will occasionally need to find a way to tell gently and lovingly someone else their actions are not acceptable. It does mean that we honor everyone's story and allow them to express their trauma and differences in open and honest communication. It doesn't mean that we force them to grow up. We can only provide the opportunity and the reminders. Growth and transcendence is always optional and it's personal. Having said that, I just want to add in here that when the board first came on, we had to deal with a difficult decision that caused some division within our own congregation. Since that person decided to break the non-disclosure agreement, we are now free to respond to your questions openly and honestly in that matter. I have decided not to issue a public statement in this matter as it requires open and honest communication and a conversation rather than a press release. If you have any personal concerns about this, please see a board member. It's also something we could discuss in a talk back at another time. The social justice team will soon be introducing us to a circle of concern report that will help us guide UUism into the future and create a more diverse and open community. The board will be reviewing this report over the next month so we can become familiar with it and they will be asking you as members to read it as well. I think it looks like a great opportunity for us to reach out and bring in others. So I am asking you all to consider where you are on a personal level of transcendence. Because unless we are open to growing, learning, and changing on a personal level, we cannot change anything on a global or communal level. Thank you. We laugh, we cry, we live, we die, we dance, we sing our song. We need to feel there's something here to which we can belong. 
Let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and hope, for we are now the keepers of the dream. To make an offering or your pledge, please go to oakcliffuu.org forward slash donate and follow the links. To live with soul is to live deeply rooted in knowing and feeling that we are connected to one another and to the earth, that our life is held in the embrace of something larger than ourselves, a wisdom, a presence, a grace whose beatitude is accessible to us, says Ralph Waldo Emerson in his essay, The Oversoul. To have soul is to hear life's deep music and to move in response to its pulse, rhythm, and harmony. To have soul is to be awake to life. To have soul is to live with a sensitive awareness of the real presence of other human beings and the earth. It is turning your hands to the work of justice and compassion, your mind to the call of wisdom, your heart 
to the decisions for life. It is making your whole being an act of praise. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now in Spanish. Extinguimos esta llama, pero no la luz de la verdad, el calor de comunidad, o el fuego de nuestro compromiso. Estos los llevaremos en el corazón hasta que estemos juntos otra vez. Thank you.